I'm Jamie Court. I'm president of Consumer Watchdog. And uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about what is unfolding as a Department of Water and Power slash L.A. City Attorney corruption scandal. Um, we've been, for the last four years, following billing error problems at the Department of Water and Power that have been outrageous. There was the Russian couple that got a $50,000 bill and was told there is a leak in their toilet and didn't get any response. As of this week, I talked to a consumer who had gotten uh, very big bills, thousands of bills, thousands of dollars in water bills, and was sure it was not their fault because they're not even living in their home and DWP won't deal with them. So the billing error problems that were supposed to be solved in a lawsuit settlement two years ago have not been solved. What we learned in court on March 1st is that there was a fraud on the court, a fraud on the public, and that fraud over this billing scandal at Department of Water and Power emanated right out of the city attorney's office and two special counsels, plaintiff's attorney, Paul Paradis and Paul Kiesel, who were deputized by city attorney Mike Fuhrer to prosecute the case against the software consultant, PricewaterhouseCooper, and to defend the case at the city being brought by DWP ratepayers. It is a complicated story. What it boils down to, though, is there was a conspiracy to defraud DWP ratepayers who participated in a class action lawsuit and were supposed to have billing error problems with their water and power bills ended. I don't use those words lightly. This was all testimony before a LA Superior Court judge unrefuted in court under oath by the city, by the special counsels involved. Since this revelation on March 1st, we have called on the city, uh, we called on the city attorney to fire the special counsels. He subsequently did ask for their resignation or they resigned. Some of the contracts involving one of those uh, uh, special counsels, they were halted in terms of payments by the judge and just recently DWP appears to have canceled the contract. It's all very complicated, but what it boils down to is if DWP consumers think their water and power bills are wrong today, they may be right. And when you call DWP as a consumer, they may tell you, we're going to shut you off. If you don't pay, well, you know you have a remedy. If you believe you're wrong, you can contact Consumer Watchdog. You can contact, uh, I would argue, uh, the DWP ratepayer advocate who may not want to take your call, but will if he has to. The point is, and you should also contact the Attorney General of California, Javier Becerra, because we've asked him to get involved in this scandal. There is no question that the DWP billing errors that occurred in 2013, 14, 15, 16 continue till today. They were supposed to be solved by this lawsuit, but they weren't. Let me walk through the details of this very complicated public corruption case. And believe me, this is a public corruption case. This may be the biggest public corruption case ever to, uh, to, to deal with the city attorney in <coughs> Los Angeles, and there have been others. It will unfold in court. There was a deposition yesterday. There will be more. But let me tell you how it all started, and we're going to jump around a little bit. It all started when, in 2015, lawsuits were filed, December 2015 by consumers who were misbilled, a case called Branford. There were a couple of cases that followed after. At that point, we had these lawsuits going after the Department of Water and Power, represented by the city attorney. Two of the people deputized subsequently to work for the city attorney's office were Paul Kiesel and Paul Paradis. And there's no public picture available for Paul Paradis, who is at the center of uh, the scandal. Well, when it looked like consumers, ratepayers were going to sue DWP, according to court documents, Paradis and Kiesel, two special counsels for the city, decided, well, we don't want to be sued. We would rather sue the software consultant PricewaterhouseCooper. So we're going to go find a plaintiff to sue PricewaterhouseCooper. And they put up a website, according to testimony from Antoine Jones, under the pretense of suing DWP. They recruited Mr. Troons, 
They represented Mr. Jones while defending this case against the LADWP, contemplating a case with Mr. Jones against PricewaterhouseCooper. Mr. Jones says he was under the impression he was going to sue LADWP. He submitted a complaint at a website that basically said, do you want to sue LADWP according to his court testimony? And he did. A complaint was drafted, and this next document is what tipped off this whole scandal. Because what happened in the ratepayer case real quickly was, this case was moving forward, a separate case was filed on April 1st, not by Mr. Kiesel and Mr. Paradis, who were representing Mr. Jones, according to documents before the court, but by a friend of theirs, an Ohio attorney who came in out of nowhere and filed a lawsuit. And the city, of course, mediated. They, he, the day after this, lands, this guy, Jack Lanscorner, filed the lawsuit, he asked for settlement without discovery, without finding out what was the matter. And the city is all too happy to oblige because his buddies, unbeknownst to the court or the public, are working for the city. Paradis and Kiesel, the special counsels for the city attorney's office, conspired to control this whole case. And if you go back two years, we were there, and we said it's outrageous that an Ohio attorney comes in without discovery, without prosecuting the case, and settles with the city. They settled for $67 million. But the problem was, if you can't trust the cashier at DWP, you don't know you're getting the right check. And we had a feeling Mr. Lance Croner, because of his relationship with Kiesel and Paradis, weren't wasn't really going to fix the problem at the core of the billing error problem. The biggest problem is billing errors continue because we never got to the heart of the problem or fixed it. It wasn't just the software consultant. It may have been the software, but there is a systemic problem at DWP that didn't get fixed. So Mr. Lance Croner from Ohio settles. These cases go away. Everything's all quiet until Mr. Paradis and Mr. Kiesel who Mr. Paradis, by the way, was paid uh, at least $1.8 million for the city in his prosecution of this case in defense of this case. And he also got $21 million paid already on a $30, uh, 30 million no-bid contract to administer the settlement, unknown to anyone. But all of that aside for a second, Mr. Lance Croner from Ohio, when confronted in court on March 1st, I was there, with these facts, and asked whether he paid a referral fee to these guys for this case against the city, where they were both the defense and rep they, had rep they, they, they were currently representing plaintiff Antoine Jones in the case against PricewaterhouseCooper. Cooper. When Mr. Lance Croner was asked, did you pay a referral fee to Mr. Paradise and Mr. Kiesel, he took the Fifth Amendment. He invoked his rights against criminal <laughs> self-incrimination when asked about the financial relations between him and the city attorney special counsel. He took the Fifth. Why did he take the fifth? What do we know? How do we know about this? Again, this is all due to filings by Price Waterhouse Cooper's, Cooper, <laughs> Cooper's very capable attorney defending this case. That's all on our website, but it cites to court testimony over the course of a year and depositions all submitted under penalty of perjury. So this isn't just a defense. This is more than a defense. This is unrefuted court testimony under penalty of perjury. And the city attorney, Mike Fuhrer, is denying some of it. So let me come back to this, but I want to show you a document. This is the document where Mr. Kiesel represents in the preliminary, uh, this is a transcription of the proceedings of the preliminary injunction hearing. In other words, a preliminary settlement hearing. So this is in the Jones case, Jones v. City of Los Angeles. Mr. Kiesel shows up on behalf of the city and says, appearing on behalf of your city, I want to point out, as the court knows, I have been a consumer lawyer. I have been a plaintiff class action. I'm representing the city. This is a great thing. Why won't, please approve this. Please approve this. Defending the city in that case. And of course, the judge listens to Mr. Kiesel, who's a former member of the LA, a president of the LA County Bar Association. Now, this document clearly shows Mr. Kiesel representing the city at the key hearing to get the settlement approved. They had not disclosed their relationship to Mr. Lance Coner, to the court, to anyone, which is completely unethical. But more importantly, he's advocating before the court and yet, the city and Mike Fuhrer have yet to acknowledge the simple fact that Mr. Kiesel is defending, is, is defending the Jones lawsuit. There are numerous appearances Mr. Kiesel made. In the, this is one that was so critical. He is representing the city. The city says, we never paid Kiesel and Paradis to do that. Well, they did it. What did they pay Kiesel and Paradis for? I want to remind you. 
Peace on the Paradise, we're going to get a 20% contingency fee arrangement if they beat Pro Price Waterhouse Cooper, the consultant for the software maker, 19, oh, 19 point something percent. So they were going to get paid on this case. Paradise was getting paid on this case. I don't know what Kiesel was getting paid on, but they have incentivized this type of misconduct. Now, here's something else interesting, because I want to show you something. Mr. Kiesel is a special counsel, and he really was. These two lawyers for the city were really double agents. They represented DWP defending the Jones case, and they represented Jones. Now, how do we know they represented Jones? This document is the source of all the information we have gotten. The city attorneys had in their emails, and we still haven't seen all the documents, a draft complaint by Paul Kiesel and Paul Paradis on behalf of Anton Jones, suing Pr PricewaterhouseCooper, although Mr. Jones says they were contemplating a suit against DWP. Mr. Jones, under declaration of perjury, and no one has contested this, says he was, that he hired them to sue DWP, and they were representing him in that case secretly. But this is really clear, and this is why this document was fought over, and the uh, attorneys for Kiesel, the attorneys for Paradis, attorneys for the city did not want to turn it over. Jones is being represented, counsel for the plaintiff, by the same city special counsel representing the city in a DWP misbilling case. That is completely unethical. You cannot represent both the plaintiff and the defendant in the case, and they did it, and they did it under the auspices of Mike Fuhrer. And all he has done is fire them. He has not taken responsibility. This uh, is a transcript the deposition of the top deputy in the city attorney's office, Jim Clark. See, this is in the case of city versus what Price Waterhouse Cooper, the consultants for the software maker. The case that brought out all this testimony. In this transcription, the witness is Jim Clark. He says, do you remember the city attorney, Mike Fuhrer, taking part in the decisions over these issues? And after having acknowledged that he knew about all of this, that he knew about the double representation. I don't remember Mike taking part in that. I am sure I reported it to him. But I don't think he was involved in the decision. Mr. Fuhrer knew, according to Mr. Fuhrer's top deputy. When did he first learn to your knowledge? When did he first learn of the existence of the complaint, the one I just showed you, Jones v. PWC? where he is listed as the two special counsel listed as representing Jones. I have no idea. I don't remember. Did you apprise him of that fact? I'm sure I did. We met twice a week. I advise him of what's going on. Then he says, I have no specific regulation of advising, but he's acknowledging that Mr. Fuhrer knew, Mr. Fuhrer knew about the double representation, about the fact that people in his office were working for both sides. Mr. Fuhrer knew that these special counsels represented Jones and represented the city in, I believe, the same matter. Evidence shows the same matter. He will not acknowledge that Mr. Kiesel and Mr. Paradis, who appeared at these hearings on behalf of the city and argued for the settlement, were actually representing the city in defending DWP. But regardless, they are involved, and this should have been disclosed to the court and to the judge and to the public. Now, Mr. Clark also worked just above Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters is the branch of the chief of the civil litigation division of the city attorney's office. Now, who is Mr. Peters' former law partner? Mr. Kiesel. Mr. Kiesel. You got four attorneys here who should be fired. We have two who've been fired. Why are Mr. Clark and Mr. Peters still working for the city attorney's office? I have no idea. But, it may be because Mr. Fuhrer knew it. He knew about it, he was part of it, and he didn't do anything. Which is why today, after writing Mr. Fuhrer, asking him to, on March 6, take this case to the Attorney General and get an independent review of his actions, yesterday we wrote Mr. Javier Becerra, the Attorney General of California, and asked him to review Mr. Fuhrer's actions. The city attorney cannot review an ethics investigation that involves him where he is implicated and where he may have participated in the scheme. This is serious. I've been following this for five years. And this affects every Angelino with a DWP bill. Because it may be 10 or 20 or 40 or 50 dollars that they overpaid and they'll never know because we can't trust DWP. 
We fought to replace the ratepayer advocate at the Department of Water and Power, uh, Mr. Pickle, for years. And we couldn't figure out why this year, why did the city council not want to give a job review to a $300,000 employee who doesn't represent ratepayers at all, Mr. Pickle, but is supposed to be the ratepayer advocate? Well, the reason they don't want Mr. Pickle to leave is because we know this goes on at DWP, and we know this goes on at the city attorney's office, and they don't want anyone to blow the whistle. This is the worst potential part of this case. Mr. Paradis, again, secretly representing both sides, paid by the city <laughs> to defend this case because I talked to him in defense of this case. Mr. Kiesel and Mr. Paradis represented the city in mediations people who wanted to get a settlement in this case, and we were not in the case, but I wanted to make the settlement better, they sent Mr. Paradis over. He sat at that table on behalf of DWP. When we're trying to get something good for consumers here, even though I, I, we're not participating in this case, Mr. Paradis and Mr. Kiesel represented the city defending DWP in this consumer billing case while secretly representing the plaintiff, Antoine Jones. It's undisputable. Mr. Fuhrer has got to recognize that fact, and he doesn't, which is why he's not capable of doing this review himself. But the second thing is Mr. Paradis got a $36 million contract, approved as a $30 million no-bid contract, for his consulting firm to administer the, what they call remediation in this case against DWP. Mr. Paradis' company, Aventador Utilities, which just came about in March of 2017, after he was proposed to do this remediation, got a $36 million contract. And believe me, I didn't know about it. Don't think the judge in the case knew about it. DWP approved it. Mr. Pickle supported it, according to the court testimony. The, 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 the general manager of DWP advocated for the no-bid contract because they said the judge is going to imminently approve this settlement. No one knew. Mr. Paradis would do that. We don't know what he did with that money. Twenty million was paid, plus another six million. He didn't get the whole contract. But we do know this about Aventador Utilities. It's named after a Lamborghini model. And it operates out of an oceanfront condominium, according to the Secretary of State's records, in Santa Monica, 801 Ocean Suite 603. This is the office of a Ventador utility, uh, utility system. This is, this is, it's got, a, it's got a jacuzzi tub if you go to Zillow. This is a picture from Zillow. This is the penthouse at 801 Oceanfront, uh, Ocean Avenue in Santa Monica. And this was approved as a no-bid contract by LADWP, <laughs> hidden from the court and Mr. Pickle, our ratepayer advocate, signed off on it. We have got a corruption case that goes to the heart of Department of Water and Power in the heart of the city attorney's office. The city attorney needs to step aside and let Mr. Becerra get to the bottom of it. And Mr. Becerra doesn't need to just investigate the conduct at the city attorney's office of these lawyers. He needs to investigate the conduct of the general manager of the DWP, the head of the DWP commission, Mel Levine, and Fred Pickle, the so-called ratepayer advocate who was just rehired for the city without a single job review. Mel Levine, the DWP commissioner, was very much involved in that settlement and directing Mr. Paradis in the city. He is part of what I think is very clearly a conspiracy by the highest ranking officials in the city attorney's office, outside counsel who stood to make a lot of money and some of whom made tens of millions of dollars, and people at DWP to hide the true problems at DWP with billing problems for consumers that go on to this day. Rather, they focused all their energy on getting money from PricewaterhouseCooper, a consultant for the software maker, which may very well owe the city money, but they buried the problems at DWP that go on and haunt us today. They all should go. They all should go. And we need to get someone in there who's going to clean house at DWP. But this is a public corruption investigation that needs to happen from the Attorney General, not from anyone in the city of LA. I, I advocated uh, at the city council recently against Mr. Pickle 
because I've seen him sit around while all this goes on. And the answer, when I try to say something to the committee in charge and didn't want, who didn't want to do the job review was they told me to leave the room. They asked me to leave. They didn't want me to talk. I left. I was thrown out of the hearing without being able to speak and address inaccuracies by the committee that rehired him. No one wants to hear this in the city because they're all in on it. And the people who aren't in on it at the city don't want to buck the people who really, really have the power there, which is the Public Employees Union at DWP and Mayor Garcetti, who frankly is responsible because he failed to recruit place of Fred Pickle with a real ratepayer advocate. He shepherd pickled through the process and this is what you get. You get a scandal and you get consumers getting bad bills. It's got to it's change. It's got to change. And if it doesn't change, you know what? That's on Mr. Garcetti's record, but consumers are going to be cleaning up the mess. The only way it's going to change is if Mr. Becerra steps in, takes control of this investigation, issues an independent finding about all of us. And when I say all of this, I don't just mean what we're finding out in this Ms. Billing case. I, find, I mean what's going on at DWP and how they had inappropriate relationships. Mr. Fuhrer believed his job was to defend LADWP at all costs, if you believe the record. That isn't his job. He's a city attorney LA. His job is to protect the taxpayers and the ratepayers. The taxpayers lost tens of millions of dollars on this scam. The ratepayers don't know how much they lost because there's no one doing an honest accounting. So what's happened is this contract was canceled for Aventador Utilities. The judge has frozen payments. These two guys have gone. Mr. Fuhrer needs to fire these top deputies to at least show good faith. He needs to acknowledge that he is incapable of doing this, this, this investigation. And if he does that, then perhaps his name will be cleared in this. I don't know. I've known Mike Fuhrer for a long time. I, don't, I, can't, I can't imagine he condones this type of conduct. So either he was left in the dark or he is rationalizing what's going on because he wants to get Price Waterhouse Cooper so bad. The blind pursuit of millions or tens of millions from a, a corporate consultant that may have dirty hands should not justify the deceit and the betrayal of millions of Angelino's ratepayers. And that's what's happened here. It's disgusting. And anyone who bothers to read the record will realize this isn't the allegation just of a, of a very good lawyer <laughs> for possibly a very bad software consultant. There is fact and truth that the judge has to act upon in order to protect his own reputation and protect his own court and to protect the justice system. There is fact that the attorney general should act upon to protect the integrity of the city attorney's office and hopefully Mike Fuhrer is a good name. But these guys are blinded to what's happened here and they're trying to bury it. And you cannot bury something this big in a, in, in a court record just because it's complicated. All the submissions before this court were under penalty of perjury. They are facts, they are not opinions. And they should lead the Attorney General to come in and issue an independent report so that the public knows what's going on. Anyway, thank you for indulging me in what is a long and complex story, but I didn't create it. I'm just uh, trying to unwind it. it Anybody it, have any questions well, in the yeah, room? Yeah. You, and I know that this is going to yeah. be hard. Can you digest in the short, <laughs> somewhat? I mean, what I'm getting is that the two attorneys, the, the two special counsels, whatever you want to call them, they were representing both sides. Yes. Explain that in, in a short thing, because that, to me, is they were representing the plaintiff as well as the defendant, and, and the people getting screwed would be the tax, the rate payers, but can you explain? Well, yeah, look, I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't need to, to have a, a law license to understand. It's, it, it, you cannot represent the plaintiff in the case and the defendant in the case. And it's clear the special counsels represented the plaintiff, Antoine Jones, in a billing error case against DWP and potentially Pricewater Ross Cooper that was never filed. The attorneys at issue represented the plaintiff and they represented the city slash DWP in this billing error matter. That is unethical, any way you slice it. And the city attorney is trying to slice it real narrowly. The record really shows that the attorneys representing the city's office appeared in court on behalf of the city defending the LADWP billing matter. They negotiated the settlement and they argued before the judge on the record for that settlement. At the same time as they were secretly representing the plaintiff in the case, Antoine Jones. 
and they never told the court. You have to tell the court if you've ever represented a plaintiff in the case, even if you believe that representation stopped. In fact, that representation never stopped because Mr. Paradis and Mr. Kiesel never informed Mr. Jones that they weren't representing him anymore. Mr. Jones' attorney said they represent him till this day. So, you, you know, the city attorney hired two special counsels, offered them tens of millions of dollars and a 20% contingency fee on a, on a potentially $70 million case, and they deceived the court. They deceived the public. They represented the, the city as a defense agent and the plaintiff. But more importantly, what happened here was by defending the city and secretly representing the plaintiff through a friend in Ohio who was the front man and recently took the Fifth Amendment, these two attorneys were able to control the settlement. The DWP billing error case never had any discovery. It never got us any answers. And it didn't certainly get us a solution that we can rely on because it was created by a condition of fraud meant to minimize the embarrassment to DWP and meant to minimize the answers the public would get about why these bills came out bad in the first place. And by settling, they got their money and the case well, by settling, the case went away. The DWP didn't have to answer tough questions. One of them got a $36 million no-bid contract and also the promise of a lot more riches with his partner, the other special counsel, in the case against the software consultant on a 20% contingency fee arrangement if they won 60, 70 million, which they had hoped to from PricewaterhouseCooper. So yeah, this was about money. This was about greed. This was about controlling any exposure of what happened in a municipal utility in Los Angeles that has been riddled with problems and not just billing error problems, but much corruption over the last five, seven years. I mean, I, I would ask that when the Attorney General comes in and looks at this, depending upon what he finds, he, would re he should really uh, consider whether, even though this is a city department, there should be someone who comes in and takes over the management that's not from the city almost a receivership. In fact, the judge responded to these allegations by saying, I'm going to take this solely, but today I'm going to freeze all payments to everybody in this case. I'm going to appoint a special master to go back in and look at this billing error case and reopen it. Uh, Mr. Lanskroner is out as counsel for the plaintiffs. I mean, when, when the lead attorney for a class of LA ratepayers pleads the fifth when asked about the financial arrangements in the case, you know you have the beginning of a criminal conspiracy. The city attorney's office is incapable of prosecuting that criminal conspiracy, which is why the attorney general needs to evaluate and prosecute if necessary himself. I don't want to sound jaded, but the attorney general is probably friends with Mike Curie from L.A. All these guys know each other. Do you expect he's going to do anything? Well, I expect the truth will come out in court either way. It's just going to take a lot longer. This judge is not able to not get to the bottom of these facts. Uh, there'll be a new attorney representing, if maybe more than one, the, the, the class of ratepayers. All of this is going to come out on the table, the documents we don't have. And uh, if the Attorney General doesn't do it, well, I think the evidence in court over the period of time will reveal uh, exactly what the extent of the, of the conspiracy was. But I do believe in a matter this big that public service is really more important than friendship. And um, I don't know if they're friends or not, but I do know this, that this is a real litmus test for the Attorney General as well as the City Attorney. And I can tell you this, the U.S. Justice Department has a public corruption division, and I'm certain that the U.S. Justice Department's boss is not friends with Mike Fuhrer. If I were the Attorney General and I were Mike Fuhrer, I would certainly rather have it as a state matter than turn it over to Donald Trump's Justice Department. Any qu other questions? I'm going to open up the line and see if we get anything out of the line or in the room. The participant lines are unmuted. Anybody on the line want to say anything? Speak up now. Forever hold one's peace. Or not forever, till later. Yes? This line that you're, you know, or that you're accusing Fuhrer of making you, what he has said is, quote, the city attorney was never apprised, the Fuhrer was never apprised that outside counsel may concurrently have been representing Mr. Jones on a possible matter against DWP at the same time outside counsel was representing LADWP. Um, wait, wait, in that matter. Yeah, so he's basically saying 
he didn't know that Parity and uh, Kegel represented, possibly represented Jones in the DWP case. No, that's not true. He okay. said he knew that. He said, what I believe he said from his press statement. Can I just, well, yeah. just read it to you? Sure. The city attorney was never apprised that outside counsel may concurrently have been, been representing Mr. Jones on a possible matter against DWP at the same time outside counsel was representing LADWP against PWC, if, if in fact that was true. Nor to the best of the city attorney's knowledge was any member of the city attorney's staff ever previously apprised of this possibility. To the contrary, Mr. Parody has consistently told city attorney staff this is not the case. City attorney staff was aware that Mr. Jones had been a client of outside counsel for the purpose of potentially <coughs> doing PWC. Okay, so that's exactly it. So what Mr. Fuhrer is saying, and I find this to be totally intellectually disingenuous, and I told him that the other day. When I talked to Mr. Fuhrer, he had not seen that transcript I just presented to you. So he's obviously not familiar with the complete record of the case, and he said he saw my point of view, but he was going to take it under advisement. What he is saying, Mr. Fuhrer is saying, that he was aware, or his office was aware, that these two represented Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. but not that he represented Mr. Jones against DWP, mm -hmm. but that the, in a potential case against DWP, but that they rep that that they represented him in a potential case against Price Waterhouse Cooper, which comports with this the evidence that um, came out here, where you see Mr. Kieselman represents the same guy, right. but against PWC. However, first of all, let's t unpack that. If Mr. Fuhrer knew that the defense that the representatives for the city representing the city in a billing matter, even if it was just against Price Waterhouse Cooper, was also representing the plaintiff in the case that there's the city uh, uh, office was defending. He needed to disclose that to the court. Nobody in his office disclosed any of this to the court, which is why the judge is so happy. He also said that while he didn't know about this, and the testimony of Mr. Jones is he was recruited specifically to sue DWP, that Mr. Fuhrer is also saying they did not, these two special counsel, Kiesel and Paradis, did not represent the city in defense of this matter. That was his position that I'm saying is also intellectually disingenuous because Mr. Kiesel went to court, appeared on behalf of the city in the matter of settlement of that DWP case and made an impassioned plea about how he's a plaintiff's attorney and he's representing the city and he's for it. It doesn't hold water that, that uh, Mr. Uh, Kiesel and Mr. Paradis, who appeared on numerous pleadings as representing the city in this rate payer case didn't represent the city. And also, from the people involved in this case and from my own experience, Mr. Kiesel and Mr. Paradis defended this because they held themselves out as the keeper of the settlement. They controlled the settlement. They appeared at the mediation. I think that Mr. Fuhrer is in denial if he thinks that Mr. Paradis and Mr. Kiesel were not look, were defending LADWP in the Antoine Jones case. He may not have known that Mr. Jones was being uh, represented by Mr. Kiesel and Mr. Paradis in a potential case against LADWP. However, the record shows from Mr. Jones's testimony, from the sample complaint that circulated the attorney's office, that he knew that Paradis and Kiesel were representing Jones. And what the evidence shows is that Jones was solicited based on a case against LADWP. So whether he believes it, believed it at the time or knew about it at the time or not is irrelevant. Mr. Paradis and Mr. Kiesel were representing Mr. Jones, according to Mr. Jones, in a potential case against LADWP and potentially against PricewaterhouseCooper. What appears to have happened is, after this first case was settled, uh, was filed, and the city realized it didn't have control of that case, it tried to find a way to get a plaintiff either to control this first case or to sue PricewaterhouseCooper quickly. Evidence shows they did bring this complaint all through the city attorney's office, the one from Jones versus PricewaterhouseCooper, that rejected it. They said, no, the city wants to sue PricewaterhouseCooper. That's when they contacted Mr. Lance Croner and gave Mr. Jones their client over for the fit, for purpose of bringing the suit. When you have two special counsel who represents a plaintiff, contacts another lawyer, and says, you represent him in this case that we're involved in defending the city on, because they were, that is collusive activity to corner a settlement. They clearly wanted to control this. Even if they hadn't represented Jones, if they had gotten Mr. Lance Conner what he needed to represent Jones, even without being his attorney, they should have told the court. If they made that referral, without even, they should have told the court. They should have told someone. Their goal, the goal of the special counsels, and I believe the goal of Peters and Clark, and maybe Fuhrer, 
was to shut down this case by controlling both sides of it. They clearly knew Lance Croner was there to be a ringer. He came from Ohio, didn't know anything about the case, brought it five months after the original case. They, they did a mediation only with him, a settlement only with him, and the judge bought it. All the rest of the attorneys and the plaintiffs were left out of it. That's what smelled at the time. So just so I understand what you're saying about here. So you're saying that even if he knew that Kiesel and... We're representing and Jones against Price Waterhouse. Let me just finish. Yeah. Even if he knew that Fuhr and Kiesel, I'm sorry, even if Fuhr knew that Kiesel and Parody had represented Jones at one point, but were no longer, in, in what he, he thought, even if he, they, he, he'd been, even if he knew they were, he, they were being represented, they were representing Jones at yeah. one point, um, in a case against, possible case against CWC, that he knew that, uh, that and then they stopped under his, I guess, idea of what was going on. They should have disclosed. He should. He should have. That information should have been disclosed to the court. Yes. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure I just want your feelings. Yes. Because okay. the, the cases were related, the court, yeah. the, 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 here's a plaintiff. I mean, yeah. at very least, they should have disclosed it to the court, but I, I believe it goes beyond that. He should have looked into the circumstances right. by which they recruited Mr. Jones, because the circumstances by which they recruited Jones on a website right. dedicated to cases allegedly against DWP was salient. They cho he chose to look the other way. He chose to cover his ear and cover his eyes and defer to Peters, his law partner. Kiesel's former law partner was controlling the civil division. You know, see no evil, hear no evil isn't a defense. But I think it goes deeper. This complaint was circulating around the city attorney's office, according to Jim, Sh Jim Clark's testimony. Not only did he see it, but that, 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 that the, the city attorney, Mike Fear, was apprised of it. And what is, if you see a complaint like this, it says, Paul Kiesel, Paul Paradis, Antoine Jones, on behalf of the plaintiff, the same guy, suing against Price Waterhouse Cooper, there's a discussion. Counsel for the plaintiff. They represent him. How did Mr. Landskroner show up from Ohio representing the same guy, Antoine Jones, and no one in the city's office raises their voice to just say, wait a second, Judge, we just want to be clear. This is the same guy who two of our special counsels represent in the case against Price Waterhouse Cooper, but, but they made the referral to Mr. Landskroner. If they had made that representation to the court, they would have been out. He would not have been the lead plaintiff in that case, and Mr. Landskroner would have made, by the way, $15 million. Mr. Landskroner could not have gotten a settlement with the city against the wishes of every other case that was filed first if that fact was disclosed to the court. And that's why it was a fraud. The judge wouldn't have allowed that to happen. It's unethical. But I, ha I find it hard to believe that all of these discussions were, went on where Mr. Clark says, I apprised him of the fact of the complaint, he knew about Jones versus P.W. Singh complaint. <coughs> Basically, we decided not to file that complaint. Instead, the city is going to step in as Jones against P.W.C. And at the same time, Jones shows up in the other case and takes control of it. I have a hard time believing this wasn't something that everybody knew about, except potentially Mr. Fuhrer, and he might have. But that's why we need the Attorney General. If Mr. Fuhrer is unwilling to fire his top deputy, who knew all this, clearly, and apprised him of everything he knew, allegedly, then how, how, can, he, how can he investigate this himself? I, I, you know, by hiring an ethics expert alone, that's not enough. That's why the Attorney General needs to come in. Did you email the chair or write a letter? Yes, or both. Did, emailed them yesterday. I haven't heard anything. Office? Emailed the Chief of Staff, emailed the press office yesterday okay. afternoon. Um, yeah, he has, the, he has the, the coverage of this. Okay, thank you guys. Anybody on the line? Okay. Thank you all. And again, anybody who wants to see the documentation, if you go to consumerwatchdog.org, I would suggest reading that uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper brief uh, and the testimony, which is uh, under penalty of perjury that goes along with it. Thank you. Sarah's going Trump. He doesn't have time for the DWP. This is the problem.